As a photographer, you have used your creativity to make a still image. However, in video, we create moving image by recording a series of images per second. We call the number of images or frames that the camera records per second the frame rate, which is the amount of frames that we play back to achieve real-time motion. The frame rate you select when recording depends on the region you live. In Europe, Oceania, Africa, South America, and most of Asia, television broadcasts at 25 images or frames per second, also known as PAL. Whilst in North America, Canada, and Japan, they'll use 29.97 frames per second, which we call 30 frames per second, and it's known as NTSC. Worldwide cinema works at 24 frames per second. Online social media platforms like YouTube and Facebook aren't fussy as they are built to host video from all over the world. So the first step when setting up your camera is to select PAL or NTSC. The next step is to choose your frame rate. Notice when you choose your frame rate, many Canon DSLRs give you a choice of recording IPB or all I. These are two standard methods of compression used by the camera. All eye compresses each frame and maintains a higher quality. Side by side, you're unlikely to notice a difference between IPB and all eye. Though with all eye, you may find that you have more flexibility during post-production. Though remember, because there is less compression, files take up more space. Most of the time, I shoot in IPB. There are creative reasons for changing the frame rate for recording, such as shooting a time lapse or slow motion. Say you record a cityscape from day to night. You could record video for four hours, but you want your audience to experience it played back over four seconds. You could record four hours of footage, speed it up and play it over four seconds when editing. However, most DSLRs or mirrorless cameras time out after 30 minutes, batteries run flat, and the memory required would be huge. The solution? We create a time lapse by using an intervalometer. Though cameras like the 5D Mark IV have an internal intervalometer to set the frequency of the images captured. Then we blend the images with computer software or the camera's internal processing, so that they play in real time. Now imagine we want to do the reverse. We want to capture something that happens quickly and slow it down so that we can see it more clearly or add emotional impact. We'd want to shoot slow motion. We could take a video clip that we've recorded at 25 or 30 frames per second and slow it down in the edit, but slowing down footage that wasn't shot in the correct frames per second for slow motion wouldn't produce the best quality. What we need to do is shoot at a higher frames per second. Here I'm going to set the camera to 50 frames per second. Then when editing, I can take the 50 frames from one second and spread it over two seconds, resulting in slow motion. Though the maximum frame rate that you can shoot depends on your camera. Let's now look at aspect ratios and shooting resolution. The aspect ratio of a still image is three by two. The canvas size of an image is defined by the megapixels of a camera. The resolution of the 30.4 megapixel 5D Mark IV is 6,720 pixels by 4,480 pixels. In video, it works differently. Hasty video is 16 by nine and has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. Cameras like the 5D Mark IV can also shoot 4K. The footage is superb. It's four times greater resolution than full HD. 4K is 17 by nine as an aspect ratio with a resolution of 4096 by 2160 pixels. 4K is great for being able to pull high quality stills and crop into video content. Just remember, it can fill up space quickly on your card or hard drive.
I hope this lesson helps you to better understand the principles of frames per second, resolution, and frame size. In our next lesson, we're going to explore getting the right exposure.